It is in this Belgian refugee center that Shimen from Togo and Rokia from Guinea met. They fled their countries to escape forced marriages. Obtaining asylum in Europe, they say, is a matter of life or death. Rokia did not yet know that her request would come through only a few days later. When my dad died, I was married to a friend of my dad. Because the man is a diamond dealer, he has lots of money. They sold me to him. I was the man's third wife. I underwent FGM a first time when I was a child and a second time when I was 12. He wanted me to go through this a third time. I said no, because I know the harmful effects of FGM. The man beat me, he tortured me even to make love with him, because I didn't want him. He kept beating me. In my country, my life is in danger because I disobeyed the family. I have a son who's two years and three months old. So it would be difficult for me to go back home because his dad there wants to take him, and I don't want that to happen. His life will be at risk if he goes back to our country. Why? Because his dad... He's the man who wanted to marry me after raping me. By speaking to us openly, Shimen and Rokia are taking a big risk. But they want to testify to end the practice of which they were victims. They were part of the cast in a play shown that day in the city of Liège at a seminar on the issue of forced marriages. Belgium is one of the few countries to criminalize forced marriage. But it's difficult to stem the phenomenon, says the coordinator of the Liège platform on forced marriages and on a related violence. I have very few victims who will file a complaint or expect anything from the law. There are virtually no figures for forced marriages and on a related violence because people don't file complaints. They're afraid to hurt their families, afraid of having their parents sent to prison, of being responsible for their financial collapse, of seeing their brother or sister put into foster care. We head for the Brussels suburbs. It was under family pressure that Amina, a fake name, agreed to a marriage arranged by the imam of her neighborhood's mosque with a total stranger, who was then living in Morocco. As a Belgian citizen, Amina was his passport to Europe. That was 20 years ago. She was able to divorce after years of proceedings, but the wound is not healed. It follows you a very long time. It didn't stop because he left. The man contracted debts. Also, his name was on the house, and I continued to pay this credit. I ended up with a lot of problems. Were you able to rebuild your life? No. To be honest, I never married again, that's clear. I believe a marriage is a marriage. Even if there are people who get married two or three times, it's not the same anymore. Halina Benmora hears of stories like this every day. She heads an association for victims of forced unions or marriages of convenience. Too often, they do not know where to turn, she says. Unfortunately, for most people who call, I'd say it's too late. The marriage has already taken place. On paper, there are many things available, but in practice, there's nothing for the victims, nothing at all. And sometimes I can also say the person is not even aware, does not even know where to get information. Professionals from different fields are nonetheless trying to develop ways to tackle the issue. And Sophie Vallo is a police chief inspector in Brussels, specialized in youth and family affairs. She's often called by the associations when forced marriage victims are in crisis situations, like today at La Voix des Femmes. I'll try to see if I can see her physically, because she didn't want to leave her phone number, nothing at all. She really wasn't very well at all. We did our own research and yes, there have been complaints previously. She really needs psychological help. We, as police officers, mainly see the victims in cases of intrafamily violence. 
And there we see that very often there's a forced marriage behind the situation. At the start, there's a forced marriage, and we can see the consequences of that. We see the consequences, which are rape, repeated rapes with violence, serious violence, extreme violence. And finally, only when the girl can't take it anymore and it's a matter of life or death, she knocks at the door of the police seeking help. The Voice of Women and 15 other Brussels associations have organized a network to coordinate and develop their approaches. An emergency call number has been set up for victims of forced marriages. The associations also want to increase awareness among professionals and the public, especially in the most affected communities. In Belgium, by law, to get married, you have to agree. You have to agree. Belgium is a country that welcomes, often through family reunification, new migrant flows. So it's not surprising to see that when girls arrive in the country at a very young age, a few years later, the issue of marriage will arise. People come with a set of values, with a vision of what a family should be. Such views do not change overnight. A matter of time, but also of prevention especially among those youths at risk of being exposed to forced marriages, which sometimes lead to tragedy. Informing them can also help them break the silence. My advice to the girls would be to dare to talk about it, to go and knock on a door, no matter who, whether a friend, whether a neighbour, whether in school, whatever. But they must speak out.